Hello everybody, my name is Zul and welcome to modding Fallout 3. Introductions and basic performance enhancements. Today we're going to be talking about how to get your game of Fallout 3 running properly, uh, trying to prevent crashes, and keeping the frame rate nice and smooth, as well as building a baseline for modding in the future. Alright, let's get started. The first step that we're going to have to do is navigate along to fose.silverlock.org to pick up the Fallout script extender. If you know anything about modding in Fallout, you'll know that this is pretty much essential. What it does is it expands the scripting library provided uh, by Bethesda to enable things such as key presses, hood modifications, as well as other useful things. This basically lets modders do a lot more and it is sort of like a, an industry standard in the modding community for this game. Uh, so what you're going to do is go along to this page and you're going to download this 7z archive. It only takes a few moments and I'm going to pull it over to my desktop and extract the file. Once I've extracted the file, I don't need this page right now, I'm going to open this up and you see here I have all this uh, FOSE stuff and a readme, a what's new file, but we don't really need any of that. What we're actually going to do is navigate along to our Fallout 3 folder, and this is the wrong folder. Now that we're at our Fallout 3 Steam folder, I apologize for that, uh, you're basically going to take these and move them over here. Now, I would recommend you take a quick look at the readme file uh, right here. It basically gives you some, some basic instructions on how to do it, but you don't really need it. What you do need to know is that uh, these here are the... DLLs that you'll need, including these ones, and you're going to need the executable. What you then do is you basically drag these over here, and uh, it will say, it probably won't say this for you, but I already have this installed, so I'm going to copy and replace. There we are. Now, if you're wondering what, let me just move this one over too, you need all the DLLs. Uh, it's actually, if you aren't sure what to move you can actually select all of this and move it over this one here is the source code uh, if you're into that kind of thing you can take a look at it but you don't need it but moving them all over will not cause any problems I just prefer so here I'll just there we'll move them all over just to make sure it works okay and now that we've done this, uh, we're going to look for foseloader.exe because this is how to launch the game uh, with the script extender. We are then going to send to desktop. I'm going to rename this Fallout3-FOSE so I know that it has the script extender installed. Uh, I am then going to go to properties change icon yes 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 and I'm going to find the location of my steam icons I will show you where those are now you go to your steam folder steam steam games I then select uh, Fallout 3's icon which is this one here I, I press OK OK and apply now, as you can see, I already have one of these on my desktop, uh, but I don't need it anymore. Uh, and this is now going to actually launch my game. Now, you ha have to use this to launch your game now. You can't go into going into Steam and uh, clicking on play. Don't do that because that's not going to launch the game with FOSC. You have to launch it using this executable. Uh, this will enable the script extender and allow all of your future mods to work. The next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to enable the game to use more than 2 gigabytes of RAM by increasing the large address awareness. Uh, this is simply because since this is an older game, it doesn't use as much RAM, and uh, this can cause some performance issues, and increasing this actually makes the game uh, able to handle a lot of the mods we're going to put in later a lot better. Uh, to do this, you're going to go along to the Nexus page for the large address enabler for FO3, and you're going to download it manually. I have done so already. 
I have already extracted it and I have the file right here. If I open it up, uh, we can see that there is a readme and a bunch of other executables, but these are not very important. What you're going to want to do is find your fallout3.exe uh, and you're actually going to rename this or you're going to copy this so that you have a backup. I have renamed my backup so I'll do it again right here. I'm going to copy paste on the copy I'm going to press F2 I'm going to call it fallout3.exe.old that way, if anything goes wrong with your executable, you can restore the old backup. Now, cut and paste the executable into the large address enabler and run start.bat. Uh, it'll ask you to press any key to continue, do so, and then press A to add the large address awareness. And that's all you need to do. Now you're going to select your executable again, cut, and paste, and the game should now be running large address aware. I'm now just going to quickly use a program called CFF Explorer to show you that I have correctly uh, done what I said the program would do. Uh, all I do is click on these characteristics here, and we can see that the app can handle greater than two gigabyte of address space. Now, if you know about modifying executables, you can actually you can actually do a lot more with this. You can even enable that from this program, but uh, a lot of people are, uh, and make sure you do save it. Yes. A lot of people are, rightfully so, uncomfortable with uh, modifying these sort of f executable files. So now we're going to move over to another issue with Fallout 3, uh, and that is the stuttering that uh, occurs with the frame rate. Now there's two main types of stuttering. Uh, there's large, uh, jarring drops and changes in frame rate that occur when you change and load through cells. And then there's small uh, skipped stutters, uh, where, where the game seems to skip a couple of frames, uh, freeze for a few seconds. Uh, so, some people have called it a micro stutter. Uh, and essentially, this uh, st program here, the Fallout Stutter Remover, is actually a mod that improves the frame rate and smooths everything out to make your game run better. It does require uh, the Fallout Script Extender, so that's why we've installed that already. It only works if you have FOSE installed. Uh, if you have the Nexus Mod Manager, and I do recommend that you use this, you can actually just download with Manager uh, on the main file. Now, I already have this installed, so we're just going to quickly take a look. As you can see, I have the mod right here, and all I have to do is double-click to activate it, and uh, it's been done, actually. That's all there is to it, although we still need to do the update. So, I'm going to just quickly download this update. Uh, I actually have it here. I believe. So I already have the update here on my desktop. I'm going to open it up and we can see that it is a DLL. Now, how do you install this? Well, this is an extension for the FOSE. So go into your Steam folder for Fallout 3, click on Data, click on FOSE, click on Plugins. Drag this and drop it here. Copy and replace. That is the updated file. And you're done. You now have the stutter remover installed. Uh, I'm also just going to quickly touch again on the multi-crash CPU fix that a lot of people have been experiencing. Uh, now I've done a separate video on this. Uh, I released this uh, a little bit earlier, maybe concurrently with this. But I want to cover it again in here just so that this video is comprehensive. Uh, now all you have to do for this fix, which will prevent crashes in small areas, uh, including the start of the game, is navigate along to your documents, my games, Fallout 3, double click on the fallout.ini file. Click Control F and type in B, use threaded AI. Now, you will want this to be equal to 1. You are then going to insert this line, I, N, U, M, H, W, threads equals to 2. 
This will restrict the game's use to two CPU quadrants. Yes. And it will prevent the crashes in small areas. Now, if you're still having crashes when you're in tiny interior cells, change this, this one here to 1. Inum HW threads equal to 1 if you are still having problems. Now, this is not a catch-all fix for this game. However, it does help with some of the major issues. So keep that in mind. Anyways... Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate uh, all the support that everybody's been giving me, and uh, I just love uh, answering questions and helping everybody out out there. Uh, please leave some feedback for me in the comments below, and as always, I am looking for suggestions for future topics, games, and or mods. <laughs> Uh, you may have noticed my audio quality has improved. Uh, that's because this week I have been testing out my brand new Blue Snowball USB microphone. Uh, there's going to be an unboxing video on my channel. Maybe it's already out. And there is also going to be a review uh, in the future of this microphone after I've done a few videos using it. Sorry for the long outro. As always, I have been Zul. Goodbye. I don't want to set the world on fire I just want to start a flame in your heart